Excellent. Oh, somebody's looped. <laughs> Hold on, I'm, I'm, a I'm a Jamaican again, Josh. I realise I've stopped it there. Because I was trying to share with you guys. I, I, sharing early. I really appreciate that. Sitting okay. in silence when I've been playing. <laughs> Cool. And then Walter sent me this one that looks really interesting by the title. So I really wanted to play this. <laughs> Just to see what it is. But Walter's a pretty busy boy. Once he gets going and starts making these, he, he'll just make five or six of them. There's just no stopping him. <laughs> the savage seal of assurance. I love it. <laughs> I'm getting way too go. much air time at the moment. I feel the target on my head. I feel the snipers' lasers. You've been busy. Track the soundboard out for you. <laughs> You've done a runner from their wall. Sounds like it. Like it. Yep. I've lost him. It's all right. Well, here, I've got this little song here, too. I'll play it at full speed. Well, no, I'm going to keep it down just because full speed, they might hit us with a copyright strike. But if I knock it down a couple semitones, make it sound like a normal person, they may not recognize it as what it is. So I thought this was uh, appropriate. So there you go. Look. I was nodding away, you know. That's <laughs> awesome. Sounded like the Muppets. Well, that was uh, the Animaniacs. It was a cartoon. Here was uh, the Warner Brothers and their sister, Dot. Um, and they like to do all these funny little cartoon skits. And this was one of them. They would sing cool songs. Like they'd go through the countries of the world and they'd put them in a cool song and sing them. Um, I think, I think that's States where I've Africa. heard it. I, yeah, I, I think it was one of, on one of my kids' DVDs or something. The Animaniacs. Yeah, they're like miniature Tasmanian Devil, miniature. Um, they're dogs. Oh, they okay. were oh, shut up. <laughs> they used to live in the water tower at the Warner Brothers Studio, because they were like the the bastard children of the Warners. So they were being hidden away in the water tower until they finally escaped to go cause mischief all around the TV lot. And that was their... I hate to say, <laughs> but children hidden away in tanks, Warner Brothers, doesn't paint a good picture, really. If I played at full speed, it might sound familiar. Don't, don't do it, don't do it. <laughs> oh, please. Oh, I'll do, I'll we're getting to start the segment. I don't think we're going to miss any copyright strikes on this video. Just bung a bit of Led Zeppelin on instead. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'd get so, the damn thing pulled. This thing still needs to be seen. Yeah, we don't want, that. We don't want it pulled yet. Pulled worldwide. <laughs> a wall back. Probably not. You know well, how high maintenance Walter is with his coffee. And we're Zachless. Yeah. Like I, said. I think we're Zachless. Um, he is still on the call. 
he's still on the flat line. At least his phone is. Whether he's there or not is a bit beyond me. Now, there's a good segue. That? What would that flat line be? Well, it would be occupied. <laughs> by Zach. Oh, is there only one line, is it? <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's a singular. It's the flat line. Not the flat lines. Damn it, John, keep up. God, we're cheap skates. We Are you getting a flat on? line, John? Flat line, not flat lines. <laughs> I mean, do we really want to open it up before this next discussion? Zero, zero, one, three, oh, four, five, oh, three, three, five, two, eight. Flat. <laughs> That's nearly as good as one. Yeah, we want to keep that one quiet. <laughs> nope, I hey, think I got it now. Can you hear me now? Yep, He's think... back! There he is. Yeah, I've been talking, and I didn't, I don't know, I must have been talking at just the perfect time or something, because I thought you guys could hear me. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> Join That's the weird. club, yeah, and then We're just talking about the flat line, and I don't know if Zach's still there. I was like, hello? What are you talking about? Is Zach still here? Hello? Can you hear me? Can you... Yeah, that was weird. Uh, yes, I've, I've experienced that many problem. times. <laughs> Pesky mute well, button. Hell. Everybody, just wait a minute. Walter, are you there? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think so. I thought he really was out for coffee. I think he's growing the beans, isn't he? I think he is. But that said, I do have music for Zach, too. Now that Zach is nomadic, I got this for, for yeah. Zach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take a picture. I'm going to get a picture of black and white one, me walking down some... Is it the highway or is it... I think it's the highway. I think it's the highway because he, he hits the road after every episode on to the next town. <laughs> with the I dog. The thing. lonely life of the... With the dog. Hank's got to be in it. Hank's got to be in it, yeah. Okay. <laughs> black and white. Oh, yeah. I'm no, crying it's... right now, guys, and all I've got is that double silhouette... In my, in my mind, <laughs> you got sodium chloride in your eyes, by the sounds of it. Sodium hydroxide. Now I've reacted it, showing it that I'm not a chemist. <laughs> <laughs> so, isn't water an element in alchemy? Is that where this is sort of coming from? But the way I understand oh, water. it, water's not water that we understand it. It's it water and fire and earth and air are representative of something else. They're not the physical dirt, fire, air. Is that right, Zach? Put me out of my misery. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Um water is considered to be the weak nuclear force in the realm of physics. When they're talking about these these um, elements, they're talking about the four forces. Gravity is one of them, but it, it's all just electricity. How the electricity manipulates and pretty much makes everything we see around us. That's right. Everything it's you a can force. Feel, it's, it's not right. an like element. Way. Like um, fire is your strong nuclear force, something that holds everything together. It's at on the atomic level. Um. And then your water, of course, is your weak nuclear force, which would be, you know, your uh, your fission. Fusion is fire, and fission would be your weak nuclear force. It's like the breaking down of your the radioactive elements. You know how they say over years and years and years, radioactivity starts decaying and this and that. That's your weak nuclear force. That's water. And then air would be the electromagnetic force, um, the... I don't know, vortex kind of that is created from a magnetic field. And then Earth is considered to be gravity. But, I mean, we can still call it gravity, but let's just define it properly and not say it's an attracting thing. It, it all has to do with electricity. One way or another, I have my theory, other people have their theories, but it has it all has to do with electricity. So... Earth would be considered your gravity. And then, in alchemy, everything comes from one. So there is one source, there is only one element that makes everything up. And it is just 
manipulated by these elements, these four forces, into becoming different things. And that's pretty much how alchemy is considered to be done. Everything comes from one, the creator, God, the celestial fire, the, you know, there's a thousand names for it. You can call it whatever you want. You can call it the sun. I mean, but yeah, that's, that's kind of the basis of alchemy. That's pretty that's bloody interesting to me. Uh, Eye-opening uh, as well. It's, um, oh shit, I've just forgotten what I was going to say again. <laughs> You're setting records tonight, John. Nah, not really. <laughs> <laughs> that, that comes back, Zach, to that example I gave with regards to the metabolic cooling that occurs when the human body conducts alchemy transposing the sodium to potassium to elicit a, an endothermic reaction um, that cools the body but creates alchemy by and this is what opposes modern <coughs> chemistry that kind of thing is crazy but that it all being of one substance and it, it transmutes into that other substance uh, it fits in the same way in terms of the alchemical process has the same positive negative relationships and charges on stuff but it postulates a lot more um, alchemically but it is all um, demonstrable and repeatable the same as you know standard chemistry yeah yeah I mean alchemy is pretty much chemistry without the the esoteric part of it, the spiritual aspect of it. Even when it became chemistry, back in, I think it was 1640s or something like that, don't quote me on that, but it was a while ago. And when that happened, there were alchemists, like the top ones, that were trying to push for people to acknowledge, at least, that there is a spiritual aspect to this place. And you can manipulate things with this other half, you know, I mean, the Egyptians, the American Indians, all these, all these people who, who chanted or said a saying or a seance while they were doing or making their, their potions or actually administering one, you know, a lot of times back in the day, you were told to take this and then repeat this while you take it, like a song or something like that, because there's, there's more to it than just the physical part of it, the body. But that leads me nicely on to what I now remember I was going to say about water. And um, if we're moving on to PP, P and P later, then, um, you know, I, I just from my point of view, layman's point of view, water is something that we don't understand. I don't, I don't think we've even come close to understanding water let alone fire and wind and ether and all the other things. Um, when you look at someone like Victor Schulberger and his understanding of water and how it how it worked and how he was able to manipulate it to do astonishing things, it just shows that he had an infinitely better understanding of what water is what it does, what its forces are, what it, everything about it, and we literally don't know anything. Um, we've been plugged back to, you know, it's made up of hydrogen and oxygen and this, that, and the other. I, like you say, I think you're taking the, you're disregarding the spiritual side of things, or maybe not even spiritual. That might be the wrong word, but the unseen side of things that, like Adam says, is is testable, repeatable, measurable, and, and all all the rest of it. Um, I think we've got so far to go on this, and I think wh whoever is dumbing us down in terms of water and everything else around us, including the uh, flat Earth, um, knows all of this and uh, is years and years ahead of us. So I'm I for one as a layman. Um, it really excited to explore further into what water is and how it can be used and its potentials. 
and I would have liked to have talked to Pete and Peter about that, but um, there you go. Well, then let me let me uh, give a little bit of a setup while we're waiting for Walter to finish up with his uh, coffee prep. He's back. I'm back. Hey there, Walt. I am back. Yes, thank you very much. I got delayed a bit. A bit of traffic on the way to Cuba. <laughs> exactly. Those bands are hard to pick. <laughs> Well, let me preface by saying it. this is how I was introduced to Peter and Pete's stuff. Um, this was sort of brought to our attention at the exact same time from two different sources, sort of via two different routes. Um, I was just sitting at home minding my own business when Billy Ray Valentine, host of the Infinite Fringe, Sunday nights over there on Truth Frequency Radio, tfrlive.com, uh, he texted me a YouTube video and the screenshot that said water is not H2O. I thought, well, that's, you know, that's a bold claim. I wanted to, thought it was pretty interesting. So I clicked it and watched it and thought, wow, that's, hmm, that's something. Uh, I'll definitely need to have a, have a good think on that. Maybe show it to other guys, see what they think. Maybe we can get Peter and Pete on the show. I think that'd make a really good discussion to be able to come in and talk about water not being H2O. Um, and that's where I was. And I was uh, getting ready to present this idea, um, the, the the video, and maybe trying to invite Peter and Pete on the show to have this discussion. When I think, Adam, you came with a very similar situation. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll quite happily. You've, you've, you've named Billy Ray. Right? was the person that dropped you in this. And I'll quite happily <laughs> say the same. Thanks, uh, Tony. Me old mucker. Me old pal. Yeah, cheers, Sleepy Warrior. It was him that came to me <laughs> and said, I know nothing about this. <laughs> what do you think? Have a look into it. So it's kind of what led us down this path. And that's... It's intriguing, because I'll say, I'll say one thing, look. Scientifically, we've demonstrated stuff, and we've talked about scientific principles. So I'll make a, a statement. Now, I can't definitively say water is H2O, but I can show via electrolysis reactions the yielding of oxygen and hydrogen from water. Now, that reaction may be catalyzed or involve other things, but I can then demonstrate that the same amount of those are there at the end of the reaction. So I think we can safely say we can yield both hydrogen and oxygen from water. So can I that just will say be my that disclaimer on that. I'm going to um, bat in because you paused too long there. Sorry. But the H2O thing, yeah, I know. <laughs> you can't breathe on this show, you know that. I'll jump on it. No, 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 but the H2O the thing, the, the, what I saw and what probably nearly everyone who's listening to this and everyone else who has a sort of flat earth bent on their YouTube cookies uh, this was everywhere I mean you're sort of <laughs> I, I know you're joking you're sort of blaming Riley and, um, and Billy Ray on, on these sort of you, you know for yeah. the ho hospital pass that they they gave us on that one but um, it, it literally no, was point, everywhere so when, wasn't when, it when, when... So when Josh said, oh, we've got Pete and Peter, I thought, cool. And I think I'd said last week, didn't I? I'd quite happily chat with anybody because I'm intrigued to see. I think when we spoke to Pete and Peter, I kind of, after the initial shock of them finding out I was a, a pharmacist, a chemist, whatever title you want to use, you know, um, I kind of premised it that I was interested. And because... Coming into Flat Earth, you really should always keep your eyes open. And even if you hear something that opposes your basic understandings, I'm always interested to, to look at it. And that's, as you've heard tonight, kind of evidenced by the stuff with Zach and alchemy. And I've looked at that and its philosophy and its explanations and its differences. And I'm engrossed by it. And, and I didn't expect to be engrossed by Pete and Peter. But I was intrigued enough to want to see 
what they were postulating, not making statements of it's not, because uh, they were talking about doing experiments themselves, having only chlorine gas. So I was very interested to see what their postulation was as opposed to what they were stating things were. And Adam, you undersell yourself there when you, you describe yourself as a chemist. I mean, pharmacist, yeah, but you're not just a chemist or a pharmacist either. You, you're actually responsible for training PhD chemists. Um, you've turned yeah. down... Well, no, I'm qualified. no, I can't train a PhD chemist. I, I qualify postgraduate pharmacists. So, oh, well, while we're on this, it's exam result day today. So, shout <laughs> out, shout out to Lisa. Yeah, Wei Shen Chao, uh, who's my international student. Well, she passed today. The other lad that works in this one of our other shops up the road, Sam. Well played, bro. Yeah. But, but and, I, um, sorry. Well, let me I, finish. I didn't mean to cut See, that you can't interrupt this one. I will go I'll for it. Go it for it. Go for it. And and just full respect to them. They put so much effort in. So yeah, I do train them, and then bring them up to um, registration standards. So before they're let loose on the public, I they they do a year with with you as a qualified person and. We get them ready for the exam. So I, yeah, I only mention that Welcome. because um, yeah, good luck, guys, uh, whoever you are. But um, I sincerely, I only mention that because <laughs> <laughs> because the moment you mentioned you're a chemist, they immediately P and P came back immediately saying, "Are you a professor? Are you at university? What, what level of chemistry are you at?" And you know you're you're hiding your light under a bushel here to the fact that you've been offered doctorates and and etc. You're you're not just you know you run of the mill sort of selling toothpaste and Sorry. you know I'll, I'm trying. Um, as I, I think as I said <laughs> to them, look, life offers different routes, and just because I didn't. Decide to take the fully academic path. I, I as you, you know, I've, I've, I worked in lots of big companies for a number of years, and then did my best to get out of the rat race and lucky enough to get my own business. And I own a few of them now. Um, but in all of that, I always had strong links with the university and strong connections and I've had, you know, performed, I, I, there was, you know, I, I was there marking students at the university at one point and stuff, so held a number of roles there, but I've always held a, a strong, I think they, they describe it a friend of the college. Um, and equally, you know, because part of any, any, yeah, any professional development requires input from not just academia, but also from on the ground. So when you're developing a an M farm program. It's all very well and good for everybody sat in academia deciding what's going off, but what's important is to get considered opinion from people they trust and people they've worked with in the past who, you know. So I have that relationship and, and like there, there's been offers and like I said, I, I took a different route in life. So that, but that's all. And equally though, Adam, as you know yourself that this isn't an appeal to authority either um, because we will quite happily as laymen here um, question you and question your beliefs and what you uh, were taught and indoctrinated on and you in turn are equally as willing after flat earth realization to entertain the idea that what you were taught was an absolute pile of horseshit which is why you have the Meekin lab and uh, you're prepared to test it as as anyone who is capable of testing it is going to test it as well so this isn't an appeal to authority either and saying you know bow to Adam because he is so and so or has so and so letters after his name you know full well that we will challenge you on every single um, uh, assumption or a, a belief or, or anything that we consider an assumption or a belief. Yeah, to totally, man. And I think that was that offer of was was put over to Pete and Peter in that, in that way. Look, I I I. I 
flat earth kicks you in the nuts, man. And if you have any arrogance, and that's what I said to him, I'm going away. I can't do it, but I'd love to do stuff and work with you. You know what I mean? Because if there was or is something there, let's look at it. We, we, we've always got to start, as we've said, from zero again. And I've started tonight from zero with a bit of basic electrolysis, which I'm happy to confirm holds true with what I know. So, yeah. No, I think respect. Um, I, I'm just disappointed in. Um, I'm disappointed in the reaction we got from PMP and it's looking more and more nefarious as, as I look into it but not one to disappear down opinion holes um, you know we will see this through or you will <laughs> oh yeah I know it's always the you go on me kick, go and do it's the stuff. royal we <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but I will I mean if, crying out loud I was asking them you know I was saying I, I do electrolysis I make colloidal silver with sil with you know s my silver cathode and nanos and power pack and everything you know what sort of voltage what sort of is silver good and I, I just wasn't getting any answers at all and it, w it was just laughable really how the the whole the whole uh, vibration of uh, not to use that word that's a shit word to use but the the, the whole atmosphere changed well, let, let Josh just probably yeah, explain yeah. a bit better how, he, how the, the night went because I think, but as you can tell, I'm I'm like I said, I've I got kicked and stuff before. This is the first time actually where my integrity uh, has been challenged, uh, and that's uh, for me the reason I'm bothered to cobble that together just just quickly, but also you know want to speak tonight. Um, well, before, but yeah, Josh. Yeah, before I get started, I want to mention to uh, area code six one two calling the flatline. Um, right now, we do have Zach occupying the flatline because he is. Hey, I can jump off, guys. If you got a call, no me. way. No, uh -uh. I'll jump nope. back down. Nope. 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 Okay. <laughs> See, here's the problem, and this is going to be a great way to segue into this. Is we had a show planned for today. And on Wednesday, we wanted to get everything fine-tuned, and then everything just blew up in our face, so we were left showless. So, unfortunately, it's as far as planning and things like that, we're just going to have to run with it. And I think this is a one-off show uh, because the guests bailed on us during the pre-show. Um, and then as soon as they hung up with us, promptly made a half-hour video um, trying, make, making a really half-hearted attempt at sort of insulting us or bagging us out or, or I, I don't know what exactly was going on with this video that we're going to sort of take a look at here in a minute but it started off with an email exchange like I said I saw the video Adam had his thing that he went and did with Tony um, BRV had me looking at it I we started an email conversation with PNP I hit him up on one of their comments on one of their latest videos Said, hey, would you guys be willing to come on our show? They said, hit us up on the email. That's what I did. Said, all right, I and Real Media, like we do a show on TFR, Tuesdays and Friday mornings, 10 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time, 2 a.m. Pacific, 4 a.m. Central, 5 a.m. Eastern. Got it all the way through. Um, and nice then we do <laughs> we do a, a show on YouTube on Fridays at 10 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, 2 a.m. Pacific. See, I already screwed it up. 2 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Central, 5 p.m. Eastern. We have a TFR show, and we have a YouTube show. They said, we would like to come on on a Friday night. Excellent. Well, since we do our TFR shows in the morning, Tuesday and Friday mornings, and they're coming on on a Friday night, now I know <laughs> sort of how to plan for this, right? So it's not going to be just Walt and I trying to work in Adam and maybe Zach and hopefully John, because he'll never be able to spare a minute at that time of day. Nope, this is going to be a Friday night. Perfect. Everybody's going to be there that needs to be there. Pete and Pete are going to show up. Perfect. I see the flack that other channels are taking out there for presenting this information, for saying water's not H2O. 
and they're taking a lot of heat for it. So I, I assumed, I'm going to put that out there, I made this assumption that um, Peter and Pete may be a bit on the defensive being asked for this interview. Granted, I scheduled and started the process before some of this stuff really started hitting um, on some of the other channels, but I thought they still might be a bit defensive. So what I wanted to do was invite them to our Wednesday production meeting, where we'll get together and talk about what we're going to do on a Friday night. I wanted to get them in there. We'll spend a half hour. Come say hello. Get to know us. Look, we're not here to um, ambush you. We're not here to just you know, put one over on you because we're going to be nice and we're going to come back and smash you in the face later. This is who we are. Just come in, say hi, we'll introduce ourselves, get a feel, and then we'll go knock it out of the ballpark on a Friday. And that was the plan. Um, and it was going really well up to a point. And once we hit that point, things just went completely south. They denigrated within about 15 seconds. It took about that long, not even 15 seconds. A, a figurative switch flipped and you could see it. You can see the change and it was just never recovered. And after, it was just eventually saying, well, you go do it, prove us wrong, and then we'll come on your show. But other than that, never mind. We'll just reschedule until after you do it yourself, which was a completely different story and a completely different setup to doing an interview style show. Hey, well, come interview us, you know, um, grill us, hold our feet to the fire, you know, interrogate us. We're used to that. We're okay with that to nope, you go do it, prove us wrong. And then only then should you get back to us and see if we'll come on your show. And it was just, that's how much of a 180 degree flip it was. And then we get this video they put up this smear piece, the, Truth Frequency Radio, hmm, piece that they put up immediately after hanging up the phone with us. So basically, it really does show how much attention they paid, maybe, or how little they seem to be interested in the reality of a situation, the truth of the matter. This whole thing with Truth Frequency Radio and all this other stuff, I'm not quite sure where that came from other than the fact that Walt and I do a show on there on Tuesdays and Fridays. Other than that, I don't know where it would have come from, why they would have thought they were doing it in the morning. And not I'll tell you why, mate. It, it, it's, it's an indicator of their attention to detail. As you saw earlier, where they cited statements about oxygen and chlorine and hydrogen and all this from this specific paper. They clearly didn't bother to read it much. Um, and I think reality-wise, pal, they clearly didn't even bother to see, even when the show was on, never never mind what you know, type of show we've been doing for two years, which is honest and cordial investigation and, and looking at stuff. And we've all got different opinions. And I think it shows to the... Quality of the detail well, after that they, they referred to us that. a couple of times during the little pre-show time as saying TFR, I interrupted to clarify the exact way this all works, that Josh and I actually do a show on Truth Frequency Radio, but we are not Truth Frequency Radio. We are Iron Realm Media. We have a YouTube show. You'll be on that. Truth Frequency is something Josh and I do in addition. And do you have a video or can we do this experiment live? So at that point, they know they're not going to be on the radio. Sorry, I'm just getting pissed again. Well, they say, oh, yeah, well, we can share screens, can't we? Yep, sure can. We'll be able to have that because you're going to be on a Friday night doing our YouTube live stream, not doing Truth Frequency radio. So, yeah, live stream's cool. Because you're going to be on on a Friday night, not on a Friday morning. You're not going to be on Truth Frequency Radio. Yeah, works well. Cool. Um, so that's just sort of the setup. So let me just say, this show tonight is a one-off. We try to stay out of this sort of BS. We are not aggressive, but we are not non-violent. If they would have hung up the phone after our debacle of a production meeting and... That was it? This would have been a completely different show. You probably never would have heard the words, Peter and Pete. Now, 
<laughs> maybe offhandedly, maybe sort of <laughs> passive aggressively. But it wouldn't have been the, a show about probably even water or Peter and Pete. This would have been a completely different formatted show. It would have had. A- I'm sure we'd have been digging deeper into Buzz or digging deeper into that lovely video we just watched a bit ago with the long distance footage infrared or discussing the eclipse that we can't see and the ramifications of the energy. Anything except dealing with this BS that we've been drugged through because of. They're either social ineptitude or they're truly agent provocateur attempts. So, yeah, it was the fact that they promptly went out and made this quarter-assed attempt at dragging our name through the mud um, that we felt it a need to respond. Otherwise, we would have just ignored it and nobody would have ever known the wiser. Which is is how it, we prefer it wasn't dragging draw. our name through the mud, was it? It was dragging TFR's well, name through the mud, which had nothing to do with them. So that's the reason it's provoked a response, really. Right. Which isn't right. We are still hosts on Truth Frequency Radio, and you weren't invited to that show. So when you set your crosshairs on a target that's not involved in any of this, it it should elicit a response. Um, Straw man. Especially we consider that a family as well, a family as well. I mean, that's where we met. Zach, if it wasn't for True Frequency Radio, we wouldn't have met all the amazing people we met since we've been over there. So, yeah, I, well, that's I, what I, I found. Him. I found the response quite interesting, Josh. You say that, you know. I'm gonna go through that. We'd like, we'd cool. finished, and within ten minutes of this going up, there was a, I'm finishing. You know, me watching it. Looked at the comments. There were ten, fifteen, twenty comments that were all slagging TFR off. Um, which again shows uninformed comment, but or pre-prepared comment. I, I don't know. Pick, pick, the, pick the poison. Um. So yeah, I really hate doing this kind of show because there's much better things to talk about on a flat Earth than even whether or not water is H two O. But let alone the shenanigans of a couple of jokers who are saying, hey, water's not H2O, right? I'm not against their message. I'm not against the possibility of it. I am more than willing to look at it. We weren't there to slag them off. We were there to learn more, to get to know them, to talk to them, to do what we do every Friday for the last two years. It's actually funny, Josh, because the first thing out of Adam's mouth was, look, guys, we're not here to mug you off and uh, that morphed into um, us creating a hostile environment we were taking the piss and um, we we weren't interested in in listening to what they were talking about or uh, not that they were talking about anything true, John. John John they started out mate saying they were happy to be interrogated, grilled, however, whatever. They were used um, to. Yeah. And, and at that point, that's where I said that, that I felt it was in the tradition of the way we do things, that we're not here to mug you off, pal. We might agree with you, disagree with you, but we want to give, like all flat earthers, a, a forum to air this thing that's current and topic. I might not agree with it. Josh has brought it up and arrange for you to come on and we all have respect we all bring things to the table here don't we and we we chew over whatever we want. what we don't do is is dis- disrespect I'm not, i don't care about them i wouldn't disrespect anything josh brought to the table or you brought do you know what i mean we give it a good fair honest hearing so that's what i wanted to get over to them that we're not like that watch our shows which clearly they haven't and this is what it'll be like guys uh, and that seemed okay, didn't it, until... Until we hit that point. Until we hit that point of no return, where that figurative switch flipped. Um, well, what were they saying, Josh? Because well, uh, I joined, didn't I, at a, at a point, and that's why my open introduction to them um, was a bit disjointed. Uh, <laughs> Whoa! Um, you, even, you even said, "I don't want to be rude." 
I wanted to introduce myself. Hi, my name is Adam. I mean, those were like the first words out of your mouth. Right, who's who? Which is Pete? Which you is were Peter? Very, very polite. As, as uh, I might have been brought up on a council estate, mate, but I was dragged up right. So, you know. But they were very... It all started really going south when you asked them a question that they, we got like crickets for about five seconds. And then after that, which they didn't answer, then they really started the name calling and the, oh, you have a Glober mentality, this and that, yada, yada, yada. You guys are lazy, not doing your experiment, this and that. That's when I was like, okay, I'm done. I don't even want to listen to this anymore. That was, that was towards the end, wasn't it? And that was when we were kind of, I was trying to be cordial all the way through. Um, but, and, and, and I was kind of trying to keep it on the, the science and the experiment. So I was, I was asking them, you know, you keep talking about this chlorine gas that's given off no oxygen. And I, I agree. 100%. That's exactly what should happen. Um, but, what the question I had for them was, well, what's happening at the other end? You know, are you measuring that? And, and that's what we demonstrated tonight. And that's the point they seem to be clearly ignoring as they're demonstrating to the public their hypothesis, which seems to be ignoring all that bubbling and that flash and that pop. Um, so, I've lost my train of thought there, guys, but, um, you know, I, I was I was trying to be kind of like, kind of keep it on track. I've gone back, yeah, yeah. And it was, it was really at that point, because at that point, you've got to accept that somewhere hydrogen gas is being generated. Now, we said we had water, which sake of argument we'll call H2O and we had salt which was sodium and chlorine now we as Pete and Peter keep announcing this chlorine gas and no oxygen gas given off but at the other end we've got the hydrogen gas that we've demonstrated tonight now sodium and chlorine contain no hydrogen so where does the hydrogen come from and I think there was a point, as Zach alluded to, the crickets moment, where I asked that question, um, and not as abruptly as I've put it now, <laughs> and that's when the crickets kicked in, and that's when really pressing the eject button kind of happened for me, from their point. And even at that point, John was still trying to clarify the details for the experiment, what steps, what supplies would be needed, and they just kept going, no, 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 go download the document and get that document, the fifth grade level document, go get that and go buy that and only do that and use the salt, only the salt. And Oh, it was very ridiculous. And the crowd was, we've been at this a while. You guys know this that are here every week and the ones who are new. We've been at this a while, two years. And before that, some of us have actually been at this a lot longer. And when we offer a person to be a guest on our show, it's always with an open, welcoming attitude. We've had people on the show that not everyone on the panel agreed with their processes of getting to where they were. Not everyone uh, agreed with their presentation. We've had shows where the guests got really upset with us and stormed off the show. But we've never been anything but welcoming from the get-go. We've never done anything but offer a platform for any and everyone to come over, talk about what they think is going on, present it. Everybody kind of hashes it out, chat talks about it, and then it's there on YouTube for other people to come find later, make comments on. And that way information moves forward and we kind of get some of these processes. As you said, Adam, we're all starting over with all this stuff. Everything's been a lie up to now. We all went into this with these guys saying, yes, everything is a lie. Yes, we agree. At no point did we disagree. At no point were we vindictive or combative or apparently my smiles were being very hostile. I didn't know that. It was ridiculous, the, the reaction. As soon as you said, I'm a chemist, their hand went over the mic, the whispers back and forth began. 
but even before that, their 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 interaction with each other was more important than talking to any of us in the group. We've been at this a while, as I said, and I can generally tell when we're getting a guest on if they're going to be somebody that we can pretty much ask the right question and they're going to just present the show because of who they are, their personality, or if it's going to be somebody we're going to have to guide through the whole process with questions and kind of keep them on track, or is it going to be just to wind them up and turn them loose and let them bounce around and hit all the walls? You figure it out pretty quick. And I could see already we were going to have to interrupt to get a word in edgewise with these gentlemen. And they were talking to each other the whole time, most of the time. I don't know. I'm going to stop. I'm just rehashing the same shit over and over. Yeah, I feel the same way, Walt. It was very frustrating. Very frustrating. And I have to reiterate that this... On Adam of Fire... To using the word, oh, allegedly, he's a chemist, allegedly, this and that, he knows what he's doing. Yeah, and then for them to turn around and say they weren't, they didn't feel welcome, like we were being rude. Yeah, it made me mad. I don't get mad very easily, but that, you know, these guys aren't, Adam is anything but rude. Any of these guys. I didn't even get a word in. I think I said, like, hi, and that was about it. Maybe. Maybe you said hi. Oh, yeah, God. I, was, really? I don't even think they heard me hi, because they were talking. Yeah, that made me mad. And I don't get mad very easily, but just the way that they were, you know. Well, I, I think know, the, the point is, is that they, they immediately went off after a private conversation and went public on YouTube and completely, as far as I can see, misconstrued who we were by by continually meant saying TFR, True Frequency Radio, um, that we're not, even though we completely explained it to them that that wasn't who we were. Um, it it seems like a bit of a hit piece to me and I'm not one of these people that says you, you know I'm being shadow banned or um, I, this that and the other I, I don't call people out as um, shills or anything else but the dynamic change in the atmosphere uh, that we experience with these guys and the way they come across as being a sort of double act, comedy double act, singing and dancing and finishing each other's sentences, etc. It just seems to me like a hit piece. So that's the impression I got from these guys. I don't even mind unconstructive criticism, right? If you just think we're a bunch of effing idiots, right? I'm, if If you're just a baller you don't like flat earthers if you're a flat earther that doesn't like what we do and you just want to go out there and you go through point by point of all the stuff we do and talk about why you don't like it i'm okay with that that's fine but if you want to completely misconstrue something that happened between us and just pull stuff out of your rear end and say well here's what happened and here's what here's the way this was um when it's the exact opposite of what actually took place then i i think there needs to be something there needs to be a response. That's not something I have such an easy time of just letting slide. Well, lots of stuff I can let slide. Um, and this was one of those times that I don't know that you guys have ever really seen me get upset. I mean, even yeah. when I had a guest get upset at us and storm off, I was not happy, but I wasn't upset. But when it gets to the point where Josh has to speak up just to yell over everybody, because... <laughs> that was like bad yelling, you know? Yeah. I started well, I getting nasty a little bit, raising his voice. I was like, whoa, look out. And even then, Here I was go. still trying so desperately to be nice. I've I never seen Josh. you upset, Josh. Josh. I've never seen you upset, Josh. Um, never. Um, <laughs> that, that was a first for me because you, 
you broke before I did, which has got to be a first. Um, and yeah, <laughs> I don't blame you to be honest. Well, I don't know that I necessarily broke before you did. You you bounced a little early. <laughs> I held through. <laughs> yeah, and, oh, I bailed out there. The yeah, without a doubt. That they, they and the only reason they only talked at us for one hour is because I, again, finally yelled at them, all right, well, then I guess we'll just do the experiment and get back to you. That's enough. Good night. <laughs> and just made it very clear. I, we were done having a conversation, and now the call was over. That's it. And normally, and me was... yelling is enough to, you know, quiet everyone else down. Um, but, yeah, I couldn't even shut them up by yelling. And I was just like, well, if I can't even yell, Ed, what's the point of being here? So, yeah. <laughs> when when Josh was yelling, that was kind of for me another kind of highlighter of the hypocrisy of what they'd said at the beginning, and as soon as they'd realised I was a chemist, um, what we then had to do, because it started out like we said they were happy to grill etc blah blah blah, and then uh, as we got to that stage, the reason Josh is saying I'll play your video is because at this point they've then decided that. All they'd like to do is either be interviewed like Michael Parkinson, which is something I think they mentioned in their video, uh, or as they ascribe to us, well, actually, what we think you should do your show like is blah, blah, blah. We, you ask us certain questions, we'll tell you the answers, then we'll go and you can discuss it, which was a, a kind of a very strange change from the, the, the beginning to the end of a, a very short half hour conversation, wasn't it? Well, I do think it was about a full hour from the time. It was a good it, hour. Yeah. It, well, because you came in a little bit er, late. John left a little bit early. Um, but I think from the beginning to the end, it was about an hour with the, the fellas there. <laughs> um, but it was definitely an experience. Um, <laughs> again, this is one of those things where we don't really know where to go from here. This is not something we even want to have to deal with let alone give any time and attention to. But if it weren't for the fact that they bailed on us and left us hanging for tonight, we've got nothing better to talk about but just a complete botched hit job that they tried to put out after the conversation with us. Um, so hopefully we will do our experiments and they will be here for anybody to look at that wants to peruse our channel. Um, I don't think we'll be inviting Peter and Pete back on ever. Um, I won't be here if you do. No. For sure. I'm not going to be on that show. No, I, w I wouldn't be here either. <laughs> and I would like to put an op open um, invitation out to Pete and Peter to make a reply video if you, if you want to, um, repeating the bullshit that you made in your first video. Um, because... Or unbeknownst repeat it say again double down. I said repeat it or retract it repeat it or retract down. it but either way you didn't give us a chance that would be brilliant. to let you know that that whole conversation was being recorded so you didn't give us a chance you barely let us introduce ourselves before condemning us um, but if you'd like to hear the conversation again then um, put out another video go ahead and put out more of the bullshit that you put out in your last video um, because we can back it up. Well, it was late. I know you and Adam like to imbibe a little bit late in the evening. Maybe Peter and Pete... <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sort of being serious and sort of being passive-aggressive here. But maybe they just don't remember it the way that we do. I mean, that happens a lot. Again, the impression I got was these were two twin brothers who spend a lot of time together alone. And that's it. They can socialize together very well, and that's why they are like an old married couple finishing each other's sentences. Um, but there doesn't seem to be any real socialization with other human beings involved here, so I don't think they catch the social cues the, the way that other people do, almost like they're a little bit on the spectrum. If, if you catch my drift, um, maybe... Maybe a little bit. I'm, I'm speculating, and I'm not. This isn't meant to cast aspersions. Um, I'm, I'm just based on my interactions with them. 
there definitely seemed to be something off. Um, and I can speculate all day as to whether that's nefarious or physiological or <laughs> neurological or whatever it is. But there hey, was something there's, there's no. nothing wrong with being a little bit on a spectrum. It's good Absolutely. for you. Beneficial. I've, I've, there I've is the something benefit. wrong, though, uh, claiming to live in a house with a door to your room that has security glass in it. Um, just well, again, saying. Speculate. Uh, a lot of things we don't know if that's if they're broadcasting from their house maybe they've rented an office space from which to do their youtube videos and it's just a little a little bitty tiny piece of room that they've rented somewhere i i don't know nope none I mean, of it us know. seems <laughs> it, it, okay. it seems a strange no, or care there's, there's a lot of strange stuff about them guys but <clears throat> and there's a lot of words i could use but you know i'm not that internet savvy but the, the word I would use is shill um, and 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 I, I want to qualify it a little bit because when I did speak to the gents um, and we raised the hydrogen point their only response as I remember and I'm sure it can be qualified was bubbles uh, 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 something else and then the thing is flat earthers a lot of them have issues and if I've learned nothing from watching Nathan's channel, it's how people obfuscate issues and also how they try to manipulate an argument for those that aren't necessarily listening fully and the way they twist an argument. And these gentlemen are very, very good at that. Now, I wouldn't want to cost any other aspersions other than the word shill. And the final thing I'd, I'd say on that is from an electrolysis point of view. And that's this this whole stuff we've been talking about here. And last week when I showed the their first claim that they were getting oxygen from for, from potassium hydroxide. These are all free energy devices, guys. These are all devices that empower humanity. And this kind of oxygen and hydrogen from water through simple processes like this is like I say littered through history I, I mentioned the sodium hydroxide and soap uh, analogy but this 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 kind of stuff is is the essence of free energy is it's the reason that the bloke that supposedly got killed for producing a car that could run on water how did it run on water now that to me is a definition of a shill. Somebody that purports, as they're doing, to be flat earthers. The second you oppose them, they accuse you of the exact same thing, that you're a shill, you're closed-minded, you're this, that and the other. But if you do analyse what they're doing and what they're hiding and the topic, <clears throat> I think that speaks volumes. I, I can't speak about them personally where they habitat although it's very strange with a plastic sofa. Um, but I can speak about what they've said and what they've demonstrated, and I shout shill. I, I will say that they can probably just apply the same sort of argument that they're using now to a water-powered car, right? They're either they're just igniting a sodium gas, and they're using the sodium gas to combust and run it, and that's how they're doing it. I mean, I'm... I'm I'm assuming that's probably some sort of along how they were powering a car using water was uh, using the water as the combustible component of the engine in some way, shape or form. What, what, would, what did we make tonight to make that hydrogen gas? We made seawater. And once I'd made some seawater, I could make a combustible gas that I could power things from, heat places. And from what I remember, the guy who ran his car on water said, you can fill it up with seawater. I can't remember his name. Surely someone in chat. I haven't looked at chat in quite a while, which I feel bad about. He apparently so. mentioned, he apparently invented yeah, a car that would run on water yeah. and um, was offered billions the next day by I don't know some alphabet agency he refused and 
a week later he was dead. Can't remember his name though. Can't be asked to look it up either. <laughs> Nor I. Because it's all. I'm not sure if you're talking about the. Are you talking about Joseph Newman? Or are you talking about? I don't know. There's been a couple that I knew about. I think his surname began with B. There's one who would run the walker through a certain pipe that had holes drilled in it. It was made of a certain metal and it had an electric charge to it. And that was back in the 70s, I believe. And he actually died in prison, I believe, somehow. He had to tax this or that or something like that, but he kept trying to get a patent on it and they would not give him a patent for it. Hmm. That's pretty telling. I forget his name. Stan Myers. Yeah, it was just water that was running through a certain type of metal with a certain electric charge to it. And it could, yeah, that's all you needed was water. Stan, Stan Myers, his name was. Stan Myers. Yeah, there's all kinds of things like this. That one guy was making spaceships, they look like, using magnets, and he could fly them at crazy speeds using the controller on the ground that he had. And the BBC even did a big coverage thing on this. And then it was just swept under the rug. No, that, that's, that's the point, Zach, isn't it? It's a sweep it under the rug thing. So what better way of clouding the subject than by claiming that the basic chemistry we understand that works and can produce a combustible gas out of seawater is a load of nonsense. And as flat earthers should think about that, and I know it's not really linked to flat earth, and I've, I've, I've struggled to see the link, but you know, in all of this, a lot of us didn't come into flat earth from nowhere. We have consideration about the world around us and free energy and resources and what resources are available. Because imagine trying to charge for seawater. Well, it's like, what, the president of Nestle saying that water isn't a human right? So I imagine if they could, they would. And I'm sure it's probably not too far down the pike in their plans. <laughs> if not charging for it, then just restricting it completely. Only the uber-rich will be able to live on the coastlines. Wait. Well, it was like the the old adage, oh. how are they going to charge you to breathe? And they don't charge you to breathe. They charge you to breathe out, which is carbon dioxide, which is just ridiculous. At some point, which it morphed have... from carbon monoxide, which, yeah, is a dangerous gas, to carbon dioxide, uh, which is what you breathe out. So anyone who scoffs at them charging or attempting to bring in a regime that will charge you for breathing um, the carbon tax is a tax on what you breathe out so think about that for a minute <laughs> <laughs> yeah go look into the life cycle of a plant and think about the damage that breathing out is going to cause yeah, what a shocker, eh? To have more carbon <laughs> dioxide in the atmosphere, so trees grow bigger and we we grow bigger as a consequence. And um, yeah, what an absolute shocker! And that is demonstrable, measurable, repeatable, and testable. So, hmm. that's what happens when you only look at one side of the equation. <laughs> So can I say that we're we're done with this Peter and Pete business? Yeah, please. So well, unless should we just re we clarify our request? Well, yeah, they can either repeat their claims about what happened on our little show. Not even it wasn't a show; it was just a conversation that we had. If, if they maybe want to clarify or rectify some of the misstatements that were made in the video that may better reflect what really happened during that phone call. Um, or if maybe perhaps you really aren't, re just don't remember it that well, because it was kind of late. Um, 
for whatever reason, maybe you just don't remember and you were just sort of filling in the gaps, a uh, little bit of brain matrixing with the uh, just what you don't really remember all that well. You're just assuming, which could very well be the case. If you need help, we can absolutely make a copy of that conversation available. Um, well, however, because it, it, it was so late. It wasn't so late that they couldn't quickly exit our show and make <laughs> That's a YouTube video of themselves um, completely denigrating a different show which is the definition of a straw man to call it TFR and to bang it on and to name it TFR was quite frankly out of order we explained it to you you knew exactly that we weren't TFR, that we were independent IRM, and um, you still went ahead and and made that video. So, balls in your court, PP. Maybe you just change the name of the video to Iron Realm Media. Hmm? I would even dig that because then you're directing it towards us well, because that's who you start. talk to. Yeah, that, that would rule um, out the uh, straw man, wouldn't it? That was the title, John, of tonight's show. Before I changed it, because I looked at the TFR presentation, <laughs> because it was discussed <laughs> this morning, I wrote, I thought, I, I was struggling for a title for tonight's show, so I wrote, no, no press is bad press, unless they get your name wrong. <laughs> And and we've got to put a um, link in the description to I mean, what, the TFR what show this jokers. morning. Uh, sure. They can't even get the right show. Never mind, trust them in chemistry. You know what I mean? I'll leave it up to everyone, but I mean, I've got no agenda. I don't have the agenda that they ascribe to me. Which I take offence at, and I think that's. What are you doing purpose. here anyway, that Adam? Why? Adam, that Adam? Yeah, why are you what here, was Adam? You've that only was been here activation. two years. What are you even doing here? I ruined it. I'm going. I and, ruined things. And that's why Nathan kicked me. British dude, yeah. or whatever you are. <laughs> Ruining shit everywhere. If, if I were, if I was really sensitive, I could have got upset over the past few days. <laughs> Hashtag <laughs> team flat Earth, flat Earth British. Right. That was. That was the other weird thing, wasn't it? Yep. You know, when we talk about shillery and stuff, uh, within that response video, I say response, that just attack video, there was a strange, as they were having a pop at me, they tried to liken me to Flat Earth British, which I thought was a very strange Freudian slit or something that they, they'd had to try and get in and didn't manage to crowbar it in neatly enough. I don't know. It was a very odd. It's a brain case part. of coupling you in with when you're over the target, you receive flack, I think. And Martin Leakey is over the target, as far as I can see. On even if it's ten percent of what he's talking about, he's well over the target, and so are you, Adam. And the only thing I would say is there is a. I don't want to cast aspersions, but when that came up, you know, when that little thing inside has a little float, and you go, oh, hello, why is that? That makes no sense. But there is a link that nobody would know between me and Martin, not because of Flat Earth British, but there is a link that certain people might know about. But it'd be very strange for somebody to know that link. You're, you've gone cryptic, Adam. <laughs> I, I'm not leaving it at that. I'm saying. I'm, I'm, I'm saying. You're alluding. There is a reason, and I'm not saying the. Re <laughs> well, I'm not saying the reason. It doesn't really matter what the reason is. Um, but you would have to have some strange knowledge to link me to Flat Earth British. There's no other connection other than appearing on a show that they quite clearly have never listened to, uh, to make that. So either it's a strange bit of knowledge that they have, that they shouldn't have, or 
they're having another dig at other people and they they're highlighting an agenda that they've yet to begin right maybe. you got me thinking but are you half bit. brothers with martin leakey or something are you, is, there, is there some sort of love child there's connection lovely for you, boy lovely for you. Yeah, <laughs> boy <-or. laughs> yeah that's exactly it oi, oi, oi. now um, you, now um, you've opened martin's, the door martin's half illegitimate english cousin <laughs> brother from a third mother type thing yeah whatever anyway shall we shall we move on from no it's a flat earth connection yeah, I think yep. sure. Until they're ready to change that title and uh, ask for some help in remembering exactly how that conversation went, I, I think the ball is in their court, so to speak. So, yeah, that's Peter and Pete, everybody. Bye bye. Moving on. A little bit of court. Open the window, freshen out the room. What have we got next? Or is that the end? God blimey, we've been going for a while. That's bloody one. Oh, we have been going a while. I think we did touch on some space lettuce earlier. Water on Mars. Water on Mars, yeah. Again? Yeah. Oh, yeah. For the first time. First time. First time. Is it an ice guy? Um, Tuesday, I was talking about that... Uh, Oh, what was it? The new test, I think they call it. The new satellite that's going to allow people to look at planets oh, and yeah. other stars <laughs> and other solar systems. Can you and look at Earth? Years... Can you look at no, our planet? Lenses planet. are the right ISO <laughs> settling. Come on, John. Oh, sorry. Yeah. That, that, how are they talking about? Oh, it was just it's infuriating. There are volcanic planet, or what is it? What was he called? He studies volcanoes on other planets. Exo volcanologist. <laughs> yeah. And I heard that. And by like, studying uh, volcanoes on other planets, guess what we can learn? Global warming. More about volcanoes on Earth. That's right. That's how you learn about Earth volcanoes is by using this satellite to study other planets' volcano. Oh, crap. You know what? We just lost all of our funding. But <laughs> good news is we can fund this privately. Just donate here, and we'll get that satellite mm -hmm. up and running, and you can search for your very own exovolcano. Well, did anyone see that article this week about Elon Musk being a fraud? <laughs> That got I, some saw, I saw the post, but I haven't read it. <laughs> that got some traction. It just seemed like confirmation bias to me. <laughs> I, I know that. I don't need to read this story. <laughs> Where did I hear the story that, you know, with his super sub? I don't know whether they're trying to paint an image that he isn't the Machiavellian character they he's ascribed to being at the moment that's right that's where it kicked this, off with those we're starting this story kids that, in the cave wasn't it that's where yeah. it kicked off so they, they, they were yeah so they're painting that story that he's just some kind of crazy tony stark guy that's a little bit out there and just has all these mad ideas and that's why he went off doing that it is such an errant way you know what i mean and an unplanned and then that's why he's got a little is it anti-Semitic did he get, or I don't know, I'm not sure what kind of prejudice he's accused of. But it seems a, a, a standard a way. It's, yeah. the, it, it's the, you've got a little leader, and the best way to make a leader more likeable is the, with, you teach that in psychology, it's the Bay of Pigs with Kennedy. His, his popularity rating goes up after he fucks up than, than it does when he just keeps succeeding, succeeding. So maybe that's a little subversive media plot to subconsciously. Maybe they got it the uh, wrong way around them. with Musk because he keeps failing, failing, failing. And everyone seems to love him for the fact. John, you can land a fucking rocket backwards, mate. That's not a fail. <laughs> so can I. Wait a minute. Given some CGI. Speaking <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of failures, how about uh, Zuckerberg's big failure this morning? 
Can you imagine that? Waking up to that? Waking That's up to news realize to me, that. mate. News to me. You'll have to explain. <laughs> really, Josh. Um, so, listen to this. Facebook had the biggest drop ever. Mark Zuckerberg woke up this morning. 15, listen to this. $15 billion poorer than when he went to bed last night. Oh, it's got to hurt. Excellent. Right. Fifteen Even if you've got billion dollars. Billion. Imagine if, if I was fifteen dollars worse off than I was <laughs> yesterday, I'd notice. But fifteen billion dollars. Yeah, you gotta feel for the guy. What a bummer. It's fifteen there is no difference between fifteen billion and thirty billion. Really. No, you're right. At that point there is no difference. Your, you, your you life can't doesn't spend change. That in a lifetime. Nope. Your life will you know? not change. You yeah. can buy countries like with that well, amount. Asked about it, to be has, honest. Has anyone read um, uh, Confessions of uh, an Economic Hitman? By... I think I've got it. I've not read it, though. Yeah. I've watched Confessions of a Window Cleaner. Yeah, don't go there, mate. <laughs> 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 No, Confessions of an Economic Hitman by John Pilger. I'm, I'm going to hazard a guess at. Um, if you want to know what you can do with billions of dollars and how you can influence a world, then read that book. Uh, it's it's not rocket science, as if rocket George science was hard. I said George Soros. Sorry, John. We're just going to step all over each other. Um, George Soros summed it up pretty succinctly in an interview, though I don't know that we could still find it on YouTube. I think last I heard it was uh, hard to find, but maybe it's been put back up. But there was an interview talking about how he does this for fun, how he'll just go and invest money to bring private contractors in to create instability in a country to weaken its economy just to destroy its entire uh, currency yeah, and then go out, flip it, and m make a fortune. That's what he does for fun, he said. Yeah. He destroys higher economies for fun from his mouth. Again, I don't know if we could find that interview on YouTube anymore, but it's it's out there somewhere. Oh, it, it's not hidden at all. Um, and these people do it for, like you say, for for fun or for a living or whatever, but there are jekylls out there that will quite happily topple a country. Um, the fact that you and I, as normal lay people, can't can't get our heads around how this is done, it it doesn't mean that you know over the last five hundred years. It hasn't been absolutely perfected by institutions like the Tavistock Institution or the BBC or media um, newspapers, Parliament, everything else. It, it, it they know yeah. us. Mission, the Council on Foreign Relations, all these people. They have a thousand names, but they're all pretty much the same slime doing the same thing. And they've been studying human nature since God knows how many centuries, and they know us better than we know ourselves. I mean, you've got Google boasting that they can predict what every human being is going to do to a factor of 99%. And I can almost guarantee that, that that is true, because I can predict what people around here are going to do 99% of the time because I know what motivates them and what they're watching and it 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 just boggles belief that people haven't grasped the fact that technology has gone to such an extent that we are literally readable books and we have no firewall to stop this shit um, you accept Wi-Fi into your community, you accept the fact that you're walking around in a soup of electromagnetic radiation, um, to name one thing, uh, let alone the chemtrails and everything else. Um, it, it just boggles belief that people aren't on the same page that 
they they, they realise that we are they know us better than we know ourselves is is my my point Oh, yeah. They do that. You mentioned economic they, and so on. I'll tell you, you give me this, this first seven years of a child's life, and I will give you a lifelong slave. And, and who it, said that? <laughs> and who said that? Goebbels or Hitler or? Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> Jesuit, the Jesuit priest. There you go. Yeah, I mean, they know how to. Not just know what we're going to do, but they know how to make us do without without even telling us, you know, subliminally, with pictures. But it's, it's amazing the, the amount of study that has gone into this. I mean, Edward Bernays, when he wrote the book Propaganda, that was a long, what was that, 1860s, 1870s? Maybe even earlier? No, Bernays Maybe. was around in the it's 90s, um, 1900s, sorry. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Late 1800s, maybe the 1890s into the early 1900s. That's what I was thinking. Bernays was the but, yeah, I mean, they I grandson of Jung, was it? Char um, Jung? Carl Jung? No? Freud. For the, Freud. For that me, these, Freud. Are, these, are yeah, these, these are systems that we like talk of it in a little bit of a 1984 Orwellian sense like the things to come we're well past these points if you you were alluding to earlier their economics and there's a quote in there let me just have a quick sniff of what's it um... but you're right it's like 1984 uh, you know you read the book and you think oh, oh that'll be a horrible fucking time to be around yeah. so it's 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 rough it's Rothschild, right? And and you guys said I think there's a lot more brave new world these days than Big Brother. They will love well, their in servitude. Infotainment to death, exactly. They, they will they love their servitude. Yeah, pleasured you're right. to death. Yep. That that was the dichotomy, wasn't it? 1984, as opposed. Sorry, talking about people that are working for the evil. People in 1984. They were part of the bad system, trying to escape it. You know, they were, they were part of the oppression. Right. But the way they described in 1980, you know, the telescreen in the room that was watching you, and right. what have we got now? I mean, if you look at your TV, you're bound to see a small eye iconography on there somewhere. I've got a TV that's I, I bought back in early 2000s, and it's called something like Eye Sense. And, and it's got a little eye painted on it and everything. And that, that's, you know, 15-year-old technology. Um, I, I've got a friend of mine now, the, the air traffic controller, boasting about his new TV that listens to him and watches him and knows who's coming into the room and what advertising to to give to them. I mean creepy is not the word 1984 is 1984 we are now 20 30 years advanced of 1984 and we don't even realize it i think it was back in 1994 the head of the nsa i believe came out and said your toaster your microwave your refrigerator they all have devices in there to listen to the ambient background noise that's right and cars from 1986 uh sorry 1996 onwards were fitted with tracking devices and yeah yeah it's i mean they they've told us this stuff they've actually come out and said it and people still don't believe it I don't know. It's weird. Human beings, it's like an ostrich sticking their head in the ground and thinking that that's going to make it better. It's the... Um, you know, the lion coming. I'm going to stick my head in the ground. It's the power the of the word conspiracy theorist. Again, that came from the 50s after the post-JFK's assassination. 
where yeah, was... Operation Mockingbird. Guys, sorry, sorry to interrupt there. We just had a complete power cut. Looks like we're there. out. Yeah, I was just about to say, we are waking up, said we're gone, as we're talking about being watched. <laughs> That's all right. I'm still recording. I can't I do this. I'm off back. it. No, I think we're back. It just shut OBS down, and then OBS restarted. So I think I think we're back on. Is it not like what we were talking about? No, I guess not. Ever? <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Yeah, we're I back like on that there. new um, Brave New World. Reading that, and Huxley and his lunatic inbred family talking about these sort of things but um that's where i john there's one bit before we before we stray off 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 this point there was there was a little quote i just wanted to 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 give on that and in terms of 84 and stuff and it's it's a rough it's, it's the one that's described to rothschild it's give me control of a nation's money and i care not who makes it law its laws and i never really understood that until you kind of Particularly in the UK, I don't know what it's like for you guys, but there's people on benefits who the state controls their lives. But for the majority of the working people now, your wage is supplemented with uh, a benefit which actually makes it up to a, a living wage, although the minimum wage is much lower. And this seems to be a a constructed paradigm where actually if you look at what power the state has because even a working man no longer has the ability to feed his family doing a day's work because actually the state can move benefits by five to ten percent and take that man whose labor should be worthy of that output at least uh, from relative opulence to relative poverty in this western society and when you talked about them playing with us it's exactly what they're doing they turn these this valve up and down so they can make the laws uh, and control us emotionally to subjugate us and make us more amenable to agreeing to the laws it is it's, it's, it's a rat it's maze totally all it's a it's a rat maze that they can so easily guide us through in terms of you know did we go left or do we go right which will bring you into the left right paradigm it's it, it's a case of they know us so well that that they can do this to us it's, it's quite easily we're as a mob we're incredibly um manipulated uh, easily manipulated as individuals um you know what what i would say that hopefully most of us here on the panel are we're probably the biggest danger to them because we're not so easy manipulated and i love the um brave new world thing um and that's where john savage comes from so it's it's held a place in my life uh, I don't want to be manipulated. I, I want to be the John Savage. I want to be the person outside of this crazy shitstorm that's going on that most people are plugged into. And I, I want to be from the outside looking in, not from the inside looking out. I can't believe after all these years of knowing you, I never put John the Savage together. My goodness. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, I was just saying that deserved a savage. Right. <laughs> Come on, Josh. Savage! 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 <laughs> <laughs> we are all John Savage. Uh, well, I'm John Savage. So... <laughs> Here's something. <laughs> Can I just take a minute to say how awesome the last two years have been? 
for all its ups and downs and roller coasters. How much I really appreciate having you guys in my life the last two and a half years. Uh, two years here finally getting stuff at least started on YouTube. We spent some time organizing before that. But uh, how awesome it's been and how thoroughly and honestly and genuinely enriched you have all made my life. Not to get too uh, lovey-dovey here, a little too woo-woo, but uh, I really appreciate having every single one of you guys uh, in my life so that I can bounce this stuff off of to come and have these conversations and uh, listen to these conversations. Um, I've learned so much, and it really has helped form me as a person, just being able to be a part of this. So thank you guys so much for including me, and thank you so much for everything that you have done with me for the last two years. Oh, I love you, Josh. Oh, I love you too, Adam. I love all you. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, it is. Amazing, man. Thank you. I love you. It's been a ride. I'll tell you what's That's for sure. We talked about, is it really two years? Yeah. Wow, two that's my a week. Two years and ten days. That's, see, that's week, only we since that. we actually managed to get our shit together and put stuff out. We've actually been that knocking this crap around for about YouTube. three years, haven't we? But right. Yeah, that was the before the before the days. <laughs> ah, there's a lineup. Uh, there. Back when hiding drama was easy. And Jimmy boy, we need. With a Jimmy boy, a bit of Rob boy. I think there's people before I even got here. Oh yeah, there's that there's started still... this shit off as well that you guys should probably give a shout out to if we're doing it. Yes. yes. I've got to the echo. The man himself still lurking around in the shadows. <laughs> <laughs> got to echo what you're what saying, saying though, what, needs to Josh. Awesome. Just wanted to throw that out there. What's that, John? I was just saying I've got to echo what you're saying. It, it's um, it's been a life enhancing um, part to um, be able to talk to you guys since since in the UK if anyone's in the UK then they'll probably realize that the pub has died here officially and it there is no place to get together unless you construct it yourselves with like minded or not like-minded people around your area um you know the pub was my place to go and since that was murdered with the smoking ban and the what three thousand percent increase in in a price of a pint over the space of five years it's it's just um yeah it's refreshing to be able to talk to you guys all, all across this plane and um, I, I yeah what, I appreciate John, that there's a benefit there because if we'd have all been still down the pub because back in the day I was right I'd have, I'd have never met you mate so um, I've got a funny feeling you would have I could smoke at home if I want to I've got a funny feeling yeah. either way mm. we probably would have met at some point <laughs> there was those degrees weren't there the separation mate we weren't far off, were we? That's right, that's right. It, we both personally know someone we we both know. Uh, right. Regardless of me knowing you, there is a degree, one degree of separation there. But uh, You don't have to be crypt, gentlemen. He's been a guest on our show. Just yeah, to Kai Holloway. <laughs> and I've been talking to him recently, um, <laughs> so I'd like to get him back on as well, talking about possibly the Rob S um, storyline and what, what's going on there. to Kai in ages, man. Shout out to Kai. Get into... I'll, I'll, yeah. And Paul, Wicked, man. you know who you are. Gentlemen. Yeah, both of them. On that note, guys, I think I'm going to have to do a runner because it's quarter to two here. Um, I'm probably sounding a bit weary and um, hey. oh, it's been a beauty before you go John as the dog as Beulah Beulah is nice. doing very well he's been here two weeks now and he's almost stopped biting he's still a puppy <laughs> it's only 13 months old but he's never received any formal training 
he's awesome I, I just it's like having another member of the family back uh, I'll never forget Casper and uh, yeah it's uh, it's been yeah I love it dogs you can't this fucking beat thing. dogs mate but how many times have we spoke this week John all of us and we've never asked about him you know what I mean that's because of the shitty bollocks uh, we've been embroiled in <laughs> Hank's been looking good though <laughs> that's all I'll say I can't get too much more into it but yeah we talked about Bueller last night me, Walt and John I oh, missed it yeah we did yeah that was late on it uh, I will say yeah it was, it was awesome. and it's amazing that hole that losing a pet can leave in a person and just how oh my God. and what it takes to sort of fill that back up so I'm really excited for you John that you can uh that you've found a dog because sometimes finding that f right fit <laughs> isn't always easy. So it's a really awesome th that you nailed it. I'm yeah. excited. Well, cool. I, I, yeah, likewise. Cheers, guys. I, I just couldn't be without one, to be firstly honest. They're, um, they, they are man's best friend for a reason. Man, woman, synonymous. And, um, Actually, he's more attached to my wife at the moment than than he is to me, deliberately. But yeah, you, you can't beat having that communication and that that uh, link with an animal. That um, you know, just by a raise of an eye, they they know what you're saying. And that comes over years and years and years, and I'm I'm yet to build that up with, with Bueller. <laughs> but uh, well, I'll, he's I'll getting there. I'll say something on that, John. Uh, I I said goodbye to the chickens tonight because I'm going on already. They've gone to chicken hotel, and I know they're only chickens, so I, I can only imagine the love you get. I I, I won't have a dog because it's not fair on him. Do you know what I mean? But. Um, <laughs> Only yeah. chickens. I'm, I'm, they they look at me. I tell you what, they look at me with scorn half the time. Scorn. They, they have they, they, personalities, don't they, Adam? They all have a, their own individual personality. They're just like any other pet. You'd be surprised. You spend enough time with chickens, and they're just like any other domesticated pet. They yeah. all have their own. You may not know no. this from my accent, but I, I grew up in the country, and uh, yeah, chickens <laughs> are definitely they have personalities. Yeah. They're looking at they you with scorn because you're stealing their eggs. Blinky's lovely. She's the old one, right? And then we've got Hilda, right, and Esther. They're fine. And then Destroyer of Worlds. <laughs> See, my son named her right. That's the one that doesn't know. I don't know where we got those names from. This is what happens with young boys. But you, you got those. Uh, but yeah, Destroyer of Worlds does give you a... We had a Blastoise before as well. Is what? that, a, is that a Apollo? Or well, Mars? Well, what? What's the story of a, a destroyer of worlds? What's the name of that chicken? That's what the my lad gave me <laughs> the name. That's, well, isn't that a planet it. or something? Or, you know, like Saturn or Apollo <laughs> or destroyer of worlds? That's. Wasn't that. John, Elenin, or what's the one from from Revelation? What's the one that was supposed to be? I am Wormwood. Worm, Wormwood. Wormwood. There we go. I think that's somewhere <laughs> along that line. And I'd I love think to on this point, that level of literacy to him, but I don't think. <laughs> I want to venture a guess to one of the names, though. I, I just, I'm going to throw this out there for Blinky. Um, tell me if I'm wrong. Maybe ask your boys. Did it blink a lot? No. Are you, you want to know why it's called Blinky? Yes. Because actually there were two black chickens. Um, and when they were very little, like before they were exposed to the world, they got to pick the names. And one was called um, B. And one was called, well, actually one was called Blackie. First, and we had to actually say, could we go with Inky? So we had B and Inky at there, 
uh, I can't remember, I had a few tickets, but it was a B and an Inky, and basically we had, we didn't know which one died. So <laughs> the other one became Blinky. <laughs> is one called, is one called the brain? Uh, yeah, Blinky and the brain. Yeah. <laughs> and on that, that sad the... note, um, I'm going to be out of here. Cheers, guys. It's been yeah. awesome. God bless you. Take care, man. Take it easy. Love you. Well, have a good weekend. All right, brothers, cousins, sorry. <laughs> good night. Look forward to that savage rating tomorrow. What was that, Ian? Well, now the dog's back, he'll be taking him for a walk. So yeah. we've missed the savage rating of the previous night's show. John always used to give us a, that was crap or that was good. Heads up. So, in fact, haven't we got a, something even better now that can validate it that Walt's made? We do. I've got it. Let me see if I can pull it back up. <laughs> Let me pull it back up. Let me. Go screen share and I'll, I'll full screen it. That is. Let me make sure your screen's here. I got nothing, Josh. Yeah, I'm not screen sharing just yet. I'm still trying yeah, to. That's yeah. like one of the worst bits oh, ever. It is just. <laughs> Let me do the joke. I could have sworn I hit him right here. Are you are you back addicted now then, Walt? Send oh, Telegram. Right. Yeah, I do. man, I play with those things all the time, making little intros or making little stuff. It's just my computer's been farting lately, so it's kind of slowed me down a bit. Nope, thanks. Oh. That's a whole lot, Walt. Wrong download folder. I've not done an OBS window in weeks, man. It's either in Telegram or... Oh, that was it. Let me crank that down just a little bit before I screen share. See? Now who's an amateur? Oh, I still have. You you getting worse don't make me better. <laughs> Here we go. This is the Walt's hard work. The savage seal of assurance. I need to slow it down. It goes out too quick. I'll have oh, to no, it's my... Uh, it on the seal a little longer. I didn't ask if my electrolysis got the savage seal of assurance. <laughs> I'll be checking over the weekend. I'm telling you, I'm starting the band this weekend, too. Shot, ga shot glass chemistry. We'll be, we'll be playing <laughs> in a honky-tonk near you. I can't wait to hear Covered in Iron. We did. We did get the the Harry Growler seal of approval for at least having attempted the, the experiment. So good, good on that. Show. Yep. Thanks, Harry. Because I want to say again, we are not against the idea of water being not what we are told it is. I am completely open to that. I almost wanted to get into the conversation of primary water. Um, there's all sorts of directions we can go that I think. It's water is so, super interesting, and I don't want to think that we're just here to piss all over somebody's idea, their theory. This is what we think. This is this is what we this is what we've done. This is what we think we're looking at. I'm not here to piss on that. That's cool. Let's talk about it. Let's look at it. That's all I was interested in doing. I'm not trying to rant and bring that stuff back up. <laughs> I just wanted to make it a point that. I think this stuff is interesting and really wanted to get a chance to have that conversation and still wish we could have, but that ship has sailed <laughs> well beyond. I think, I think that's a, a really good point and that's why I was intrigued, but I think challenging proven fundamentals with either Gish Gallup or whatever, 
is is probably the wrong way of discovering realistically not new things but old things and that that for me is why Zach's stuff I think is is illuminating and we'll all learn a bit more as he elaborates on his journey in terms of alchemy because he's he's, a, he's, a, he's miles ahead of me do you know what I mean and has a much better grasp and I think some of the older stuff that has been purported to be nonsense and ridiculed in the same way that Flat Earth has been as we paint alchemists as fools who try to make gold as opposed to its true nature um, I think that's the way if we're going to investigate chemistry and start to question it let, let's stick with some of the basic principles and foundations that we know are true that even an idiot, an idiot like me can do on a Friday night with a with a with a urine test tube, you know, a urine specimen jar. I'm saying urine. Urine. <laughs> Don't drink it necessarily unless you know <laughs> you've investigated and you feel that's right for you. Don't let somebody you pee on do you. Stuff with urine to make it so strong that it can melt gold and jewels. Just saying. At least that's what some of the books that I have say. Urine is a very powerful salt. And what in the world are you going to do with melted jewels, I wonder? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what they use them for. That's the thing. <laughs> All this stuff got experiment. That's right. You, you have to imagine they were probably like the original hoarders. What do you need? Oh, yeah. What do you need liquid juice jewels for? Who knows? Let's make it. Hold on to it. We'll find out. We might need it for something later. So half of my shed's like that, mate. So, <laughs> yeah. I definitely battle those tendencies. My mother is a hoarder. She's doing pretty well where we're working with her. Um, she's by herself, so it's sort of over the phone therapy almost forced with a little bit of tough love <laughs> but she's working through it and she is selling stuff she's giving stuff away she's clearing out stuff she's trying to move back to missouri from georgia so uh in order to do that she's got to sell her house in georgia which means <laughs> getting rid of all her stuff because she ain't bringing it here so uh <laughs> is that is that that Missouri saying there, Mum? If you're moving back, you ain't got to just tell me. you got to show me. So <laughs> you shit. <laughs> I'll know when you're serious when all of that bullshit, <laughs> 40 years accumulating, is gone. <laughs> then I'll know you're almost ready to come home. Until then, it's just words in the wind. <laughs> But like I said, she's working. She's doing it. She's slowly but surely. She's working through it. So one of these days, I'm going to have to stay here and <laughs> live at home with my mother. But uh, she's hitting retirement age and not in necessarily the best of health. Um, so at least we'll be here and I'll pawn my son off to take care of her. <laughs> Well, that's why we have children. That's right. <laughs> For our dotage. <laughs> oh, well. We've got to get her on, mate. We've, we've at least got to have a chat when she comes over. And thank her for uh, giving the world you. If nothing <laughs> else. <laughs> that would definitely be unexpected. I'm sure she would appreciate it <laughs> if nobody else. <laughs> She's the one person who would appreciate that conversation. But I guess it is about that time when we're rolling up on the four hour mark, which is a long yeah, one. Which is long. With no guest, our top. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it, it's not bad, is it, for no guests? No, it's not bad. I think uh, 
it may not be the most popular show in our repertoire, but I think it worked well for a bit of a therapy session for us. We all got to vent a little bit over well, how we were victimized <laughs> over the last couple of days by a couple of jackasses. Well, Zach last week said for him, you know, when he, he left home and Rennie called in and there was the synergy there. I think, as we've discovered, that it's two years, I didn't know that. I'd have, I'd have definitely done a new OBS window or something, you know what I mean? But isn't it weird tonight, after all the years we've been going, we've never had a, this kind of shit. Uh, but for the two-year anniversary, let's make it something different. So thanks, Pete and Peter. Here's to another two years of never having to address this kind of BS again. <laughs> <laughs> of the drama. I'm still looking forward to trying to address this stuff with water. That's not the... I wasn't saying that's BS. Let me just clarify a little. <laughs> oh, some people are sensitive. And so quick to misrepresent things that have been said and or not said. Mate, there's always stuff to learn. But if you're not interested in learning... You're just only interested in telling people to go away and <clears throat> prove certain very constrained things that don't explain the whole thing, then, you know, that's not me. I, I, I was really interested, and still am, and I think there's a route to take, as I alluded to earlier, and Pete and Peter's way maybe isn't, but looking into the older, more alchemical methods is certainly a way of exploring the as I've described earlier, the wondrous and nonsensical properties of water. Um, but I'm pretty sure we can get both oxygen and hydrogen from it. So we've certainly proved hydrogen tonight. Well, I'm sure there's still people out there that are going to argue whether or not that's hydrogen. But... At this point, I think this is, again, this is part of the design, I think. This is why it's this specific type of conversation that we're having. Because we'll, we'll, we could spend the next six months going round and round, butting our heads up against each other, saying yes and no, and yes and no, and yes and it is, no it's not, yes it is, no it's not, yes it is, no it's not. And that's where we'll be six months from now. They're seeing these kind of arguments. People are directing conversations. Society is being directed. Plants are being planted to direct society and direct the social conversation in just this manner. Just lead people into these circular arguments that go nowhere. Waste your time. Yep. That's what it is. It's filled my freaking week. But look at it this way. Two years. That's... 52 weeks that's a 104 Fridays approximately we did take take some time off so we'll round up we'll call it we'll call it a hundred we'll call it a hundred episodes we have out there Boosh. one in a hundred we have to come and deal with this shit that's not that's not a bad little ratio I don't think considering the crap that's out there being wait so wait wait let me just do some maths on that Thank you. I would say that's about one in a hundred. <laughs> Those sort of chances that we'd have to deal with this shit next time. So we're good for two years, guys. See, look at you rubbing off on me, statistician. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's been fun. It's been fun. And I'll tell you what, you know, fuck knows what's to come. But I. We mentioned people in the past, and I'll say again, I'm looking forward to this journey with Zach as well, mate, because, you know, the man's got his own theme tune. That's why he's my hero. My modern-day yeah. hero. That's, I am, again, I, I, jealous is the only word that comes to mind. It's, I understand that's probably not the way I should look at it, um, but I'll be damned if that's not what I am. Uh, I would love if I could just hate all over you, Zach. <laughs> but I can't. I just wish I were your in your shoes or in your <laughs> walking a mile in your bare feet. 
I have an interesting thing I just discovered. Ooh, when I was writing the description this morning, I was looking for when we started this whole madness, and I knew it wasn't actually here on the Iron Room Media channel. It was over on what used to be called the Have No Sphere channel. And checking there is when I found the July 10th date, or 17th, or whatever it was. Okay. Turns out, on this channel, we actually began publishing on September 17th of 2016. So that anniversary here on the Iron Realm Media channel is uh, still a bit down the road. So we could maybe plan to have a little special episode, maybe gather up some guests that we've had over the years, uh, old friends, and uh, kind of have a family reunion of sorts. That'd be a perfect time to have some point point. <laughs> so we have the 14th or the 21st in September on a Friday. So we could probably plan it for the 14th. Sounds good to me. My wife's birthday's on the 22nd. So <laughs> <laughs> that would be a, a busy weekend for you, yes. <laughs> well, September 11th is my big conversation with my buddy Stefan that he's going to come down to the studio and grab, hop on the second mic, and we're going to have a little talk about. The heliocentric model versus um, what is, again, as Nathan would say, obviously and observably flat. So that's going to be happening in September 11th. Whether we do that live or I just record the conversation and I'll upload it. Or maybe I'll make that. That's what I'll do. I'll just record it and we'll make that part of the weekend celebration. So that maybe on that Sunday, on the 16th, I'll upload that to the channel. And it'll just be a whole weekend long thing we'll be able to do. Maybe we'll just plan to make a weekend out of it. We'll have several guests throughout the weekend, and we'll just go live randomly throughout the weekend. Make you guys on, stay on your toes. Like Look at me yeah, playing a whole effing thing. You dropping bombshells, baby. This is where we get offline real quick and shut me the hell up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to end up with us having some sort of game show or something. I like it. Um, so before we do get out here, I want to make a little thing. I do want to take a minute, um, <laughs> just to put this out there, just cause I ain't scared. I ain't a singer, but, uh, Billy Ray's asked me once or twice. And I know if he's hasn't stopped listening by now, because this is a long one, I'll at least direct him here so that he can hear this part. Cause I know he'll be interested in listening to the Peter and Pete stuff. Uh, he's asked me on more than one occasion to sing us out on an infinite fringe. So he always catches me off guard. So I figured I had to have something planned, but I don't want to just come up with something random. So as I was doing, since I've been listening to Norb, I was just sitting here on Spotify, listening to random stuff and uh, listening, of course, to one of my favorite uh, traditional Irish folk music bands, the, the Clancy brothers. And they do a little version of a song that I thought was just a bit of modification. I thought would be really awesome. Um, because that's sort of what we're doing here, right? Uh, we're all just here trying to figure out what's going on all across this realm. Um, <laughs> and it's, it's here for, for you and it's for me. Um, from Are you going Indiana on us? <laughs> to the New York Island, <laughs> from the Redwood Forests. To the Gulf Stream waters, this realm was made for you and me. Because that's what it is, ladies and gentlemen. It was made for all of us here. Um, <laughs> TGIF. Thank God it is flat. So next time, Billy Ray, you and I have me sing you out of an infinite fringe. You can either hear that or <laughs> think twice before asking me to sing you out on an infinite fringe. I, I wish I'd have known the lyrics I'd have joined in, bro. Well, it was a bit of a rough yeah, that start. that was an old Woody Guthrie song. That's right. I saw his son, Arlo Guthrie, play. Yeah, Arlo Guthrie. At a further us. festival. Lots of yeah, good stuff. Yeah, he's the one who did Alice's Restaurant mm -hmm. and the Pickle. Yep. He had a few good songs. <laughs> I said we covered this over on the Ironworks just not too many weeks ago. Yeah. Talking about Alice's restaurant. Mm -hmm. well, instead of that, then, do you want to 
What, what was Norbs' word? Do you want to play us out with our sick Ooh, beats? Yes. Or um, should we play out with the Norbs tune? That was a good shout, Josh. We definitely need Norbs tune. I'm still... I love. He's got a line in one of his songs. Um, the one where he was just doing the remix not that long ago. Where he's talking about this one's for the fighters pulling all-nighters. Man, that touched me. That's just... That guy's talented. And every word he writes has meaning behind it. And I love that. I'm a, I'm a meaning type of person. When it comes to songs and stuff like that, I'm a big fan of Bob Dylan. And I was going to let you guys know Norb has some new stuff out, if you didn't know, on his channel. I saw it yesterday. This is just what I was pulling up. Like a King with OG Lava? Yeah. Yeah. Adam, that's the one you were talking about playing out with, right? Or did you want the his remix of yeah, Ariana no. Grande? No, no, whatever. No, I was just saying I that one song that he was doing, that remix, when he said that line, it just hit like hard. Oh, that respect Thanks, the process. I, I got you. I see where you are. Yeah. Adam, which one were you talking about? Well, the one I was on about was um, Norbs had put a video out, uh, Like a King. Mm-hmm. That one? <clears throat> uh, OG Lava. And I think he's just asking for a bit of feedback again. So if we can give it a shout out, I thought that'd be cool. Probably a good way of playing out. Oh. I think there's a little shout out from him at the beginning worth playing, mate. So that was my. I didn't think that. I was going to say because he said our end tune was sick beats, you see. But uh, I think this is uh, a bit better in it. So yeah. there's one, one thing I forgot to mention. Uh, this is a story I forgot to tell you guys even last week. Um, so I guess it was today's the. 27th so i guess it was the 17th i got a email from crow triple seven nope it was a message on skype saying 15 minutes question mark and i stopped and I th i'm thinking uh i was at work i think in the middle of something and i had to stop what i was doing just so i could answer crow triple seven whoever sends me a message uh so it dawned on me that he was because he's going to be on our show in August, but he had just gotten his dates mixed up. Because I think I told John even, I got my dates mixed up when I told John in our room that Crow was going to be on, because I said it in our Twitter room that it was going to be 717. Well, that was wrong. It's 817 that he's going to be on. Well, interestingly, on 717, Crow hits me up saying, hey, 15 minutes, is that when we're going to be on? I'm like, no, sorry, that's next month. He's like, oh, he said, I dicked that up by a whole month? I said, uh, yeah, <laughs> pretty much. He's like, all right, well, just to be another reminder then. Uh, but if you listen to his latest show with Jason Lindgren, uh, he gave us a nice little shout out at the beginning. So at least we know he, he's remembered it's not going to be till August. So I, just oh, I can't to, wait for that. Yeah, it's always nice to hear our, our name come up in a Crow Triple Seven episode. Still one of our best, highest watched episodes is the one when he was here. Yep, I'm looking forward to it. If it wasn't for Crow, I probably wouldn't be here, to be honest. I might, but it was his video. Yes, so. sir. Exactly, sir. Well, where I, I started getting flatter, 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 looking to flatter, looking to flatter, looking to flatter. Well, I sure hope if you I was on that, have. Sorry, yeah. I just want to say, I sure hope you have no, some right. reception on the 17th of August. When he's here, oh, I'll make sure. I'll be, I'll be sitting in a Walmart or you know, library or something <laughs> for hours. I don't care. <laughs> I'm getting. I'll be there for sure. Oh yeah. So I think that was the last little bit of house cleaning I had from my brain. Things I knew that I needed to check off my mental checklist. Do you guys have anything else? Walter shakes his head. I can hear it rattle. Makes for great radio. <laughs> I have nothing, sir. Just thank you, everyone. It's been a great, great ride. The two years has been amazing. The ones who've only been here short time, Zach, uh, beyond amazing. And as we've already said, it was just time for you to find your family again. Adam, John, everyone, man. I don't want to start listing names and forget people. Just thank you all. And I, it's been great. Thanks. 
Yeah, same thing here. Um, thank you guys for letting me be a part of all this and asking me to, you know, to come and just hang out. I mean, I was here anyway in the chat, but so awesome just to be able to voice my opinion whenever I want. And it is, it's a family. You guys are my family now, you know? Well, forgive us it. if sometimes we don't allow awesome. you to get everything out like you want. We do tend to... I mean, there's five of us, six, seven, eight of us. Things can be hectic. Meow, meow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it's just, it's awesome. I love having a group of guys again. You know, it's been a while. I'd I'd, <clears throat> I'd say it's, it's a pleasure having you, mate, and um, bringing your insight and perspective is, is a real pleasure that you're prepared to share it with us. Is what I'd say. Uh, and moving forward, so that's you know the more perspectives we we, we can share, f for me is the the way forward. Sharing ideas, not <clears throat> decrying each other. Yeah. On that, Josh, we I've got five minutes and ten video of Norbs to play. So whenever you want. <laughs> well, if you've got it, I've got it pulled up. I don't know if I'm still sharing screens or not, but. Somebody is. I'll see it. I think that's me. All right, all. It was a good night. Thank you all for being here. All that good stuff. Send it out there, Jack. I'll transition and leave it with you. Yeah.